Hey, this is OXDF, and uh, today I'm looking at Advent of Code 2022, Day 24, Blizzard Basin. Um, again, I'm on the road, so I don't have my normal setup here, so no video, and apologies for if the audio is not great. Um, and uh, again, just based on my schedule, I'm not, I'm not going to actually do a full walkthrough of me solving this one, but rather just more of a summary of what I managed to write. Um, so the challenge is going to be, I'm going to get a little map like this. Um, this map's not very good, so I'll skip down here to... Map. Well, we'll do this one for starts. Um, a map like this, and each minute, um, the storms, which are represented by the arrows, basically, will each move one direction. And when it gets here, it will wrap around, so the next one will come up here. You can see that here. Um, they can coexist in the same spot, and they just continue moving through the way they would move otherwise. Um, and you get a more complicated one that looks something like this with lots of storms. Um, and so your initial state, you start at the top in the top row, the one open space. Um, these hash pound signs are walls. And you have to get to the bottom one. And so each round, what's going to happen is all of the storms are going to move and you're going to move or stay at the same time. So it doesn't matter. Um, you can think of it as we'll move all the storms and then we'll see, am I allowed to stay in the same spot? And am I allowed to move to each of the north, south, east, and west, et cetera? No diagonal moves. And the question is, how fast can you get through? Um, so let's go over and look at code for this. I got the part one code here. So I'm going to start off by defining um, just a simple DIRS utility here. It'll be helpful to have so that I can quickly get uh, directions off of each of the arrows. Um, we'll parse our input into just a bunch of lines. Um, I'm going to, for, I found it was useful um, to have the number of rows and number of columns uh, available to me as I worked. So we're going to just grab that here. Um, a little trick that caught me, so two things first, actually. First, I'm going to base, I'm going to use for the sake of it, I think it turns out to be easier. If I make this top, like what I highlighted here as this um, right arrow, the first right arrow is zero, zero, which means the walls are all in like negative one column and like the wall up here, this whole row is negative one row. Um, and the reason that's nice is because when I want to ha have the, the uh, storms move off one edge and onto the other, I can just use mod. And so, you know, if this starts at zero, I can go to one. Whoa, what do I do there? two, three, four, five, and then when I go, this whole thing is six long, and so when I go six, it just becomes zero again, and I don't have to stress about that. So I'll have to do a little bit of bounds checking, as I do in other places, because it's kind of weird, like I might never want to move up into this negative one row, um, but I think that was, that was the decision I made to go with. The other thing to note here is I subtract off, so I subtract off two for the number of lines, for the number of rows. I subtract off three for this, because each line has an, a new line appended to the end, and so, uh, this cost me a lot of time trying to figure this out. I originally subtracted two, but I really need to subtract three um, for the new line and each wall. Um, I can get my start position by finding the dot on the first row of line zero and the end target by getting the negative one, you know, the last row and finding the dot. Um, so now I'm going to start my breadth first search. And the reason breadth first search is nice here is because basically it tries all the places you can get into time zero or time one, and then all the places you can be in time two and all in time three. And so as soon as I get to end, I know I'm done. I know I've got the fastest time. Um, so I'm going to start a queue. We've done this many times throughout Advent Code. Um, a state is going to be a time, uh, my current position in my current row. Um, I guess I probably could have just, the me thing feels pretty irrelevant here. I might even change this. So we'll just make this um, start like that. I don't think I used me anywhere else. Let's see. Nope. Okay, so we can get rid of that. <clears throat> and so, and this is the, the asterisk here. What this does is it expands out start. So start is currently a tuple. We have up here, what do we find start? Right here. So it's a tuple of negative one and some things. So we're just going to, that's going to make make it flat here. So we'll have zero starting spot. I'm also going to keep a set of scene because if I get to a certain, you know, if I can get to a certain spot, maybe there's three different paths that get me to a certain spot at the same time in the same spot. I don't need to check all three. You know, the, the shortest answer is still the shortest from there. Um, I will keep part one as none um, and use that to know when to go. I don't want to use, I don't want to go because I could just stay in the same spot indefinitely. I can't, I don't want to just, the queue will never end. So I'm going to need some other way to break this loop. So while I'm in the loop, I'm going to start with, I'm going to pop off my only state. If it's already been seen, I'll continue. Otherwise, I'll add it to steam. Um, then I'm going to use some way to get storms. And this was like the big trick, I think, in the challenge was I don't, um, it's tempting to keep track of the storms. Um, it's tempting to keep track of the storms in such a way that you are 
um, calculating them on each move. But to do that, you have to pass them along with the states. And, and it can be, that can be pretty big, especially when I get to the input text. Um, if we look at the input text, you know, it's not small. Um, and if I had to keep track of that for every state, it would get large. Um, and the other thing is I might be doing a bunch of redundant um, calculations, tracking storms all over the place and tracking moves. I think it would be really slow. So but what we know is where the storms are, because the storms move independently of each other, is just completely a factor of time. And so we're going to make a function called get storms and pass in t minus one. Um, and the other neat thing we're going to do here, in fact, let's go and look at it right here. We have get storms. Um, we're going to use this cache tool from funks tools, which means if I call um, the first time I call on, you know, say time four, um, I'm going to have to calculate all of it. The next time I want to know what the storms look like in time four, it's just going to return from cache. It's going to be basically instant, and that's going to make this really fast. So effectively, I have a way to get the storms at any given time, and I only have to calculate it once. And I don't have to calculate for anything I don't need. Um, so to do that, I will make myself a set. I will enumerate over the the input lines here, ignoring you know the walls on each side. Um, it's interesting. I am just now realizing I don't actually uh, I don't actually get rid of the new line here, but I guess it doesn't matter. We'll ignore that. Second. So basically, I'm looping over all the lines, getting the row number and the row. Uh, then I'm looping over all the, all the characters in each line, getting a, a C and a character. Um, if the character is one of these four, um, I will get a DR and DC based on this BIRS function. And then I can say the current space for that thing is going to be the row and column it started in plus uh, DR plus time and DC plus time, and then mod num C num, num R. And I can add that to my set and then return the set of all the points that are bad at, at this given time. Um, what I was noting above earlier is this should probably technically be minus two. Again, to get rid of the new line and the wall, but it doesn't matter because I'm if, if I, even if I'm hitting every wall, um, it, you know, who cares? It's just going to do nothing. Well, it, it does matter that I take this first wall off because that's how I get my R and C to be correct. If I didn't do that, I just did lines and row. I would have to subtract one from each of these um, row and column, so, which we find too. That, that's an option. Um, okay, so once I'm down here, I've managed to get my storms to the current time. Um, so if the current position is not in storms, then I have the option to just stay in the current position. So I can make T, you know, T plus one, I can put that to the queue. Um, probably should move that after this, but it doesn't really matter. Not a huge deal. Um, then I can say for each move in dir.value, so each of these different offsets, I'm going to loop through. And if that offset is going to put me at the end spot, um, then I can say, you know, we reached that, um, I don't really need this, I'll get rid of that. Um, we can just say uh, part one, I mean, is T plus one, because that's what, you know, would get me there. And I'm done. I can break out of this, um, and that's going to break me out of uh, this loop. But that's why I set part one here, and that's why it breaks me. So it breaks me out of this loop as well, and then I'm going to print part one, and I'm going to be done. Um, if I can't reach the end, if the spot's not the end, um, as long as it's in bounds, and the reason I check the end separately is because the end's technically out of bounds, right? It's in my negative row, or, or it's actually in a row one more than the row I'm checking. Um, so I'll check that separately. Um, but then I can say if it's inbounds and if it's not in storms, um, and I could check this with an and instead of an if here, but um, then I'm going to append that this um, possible position. So um, the next time and the R plus DR to the states and loop again. Um, and so this will just be a breath first search and I will get it. Um, we can do Python day 24 part one. Uh, we can do an example. And we get 18 very quickly. Um, and we can do it on the input. And it takes another, a little bit longer, but not, not too bad. Get 230, and that is the correct answer. 230. So in part two, you get to the end, and one of the elves realizes he forgot his snacks. And so now you really have to walk to the end, back to the beginning, and then back to the end again. Um, but this is actually, I didn't, I thought this, this was not too bad. Um, we can use the infrastructure we've set up already. So let's go over here to part to this. Um, we're going to have our same functions and setup over here. Um, I just saved that off in a different file because I thought it might be easier for this kind of overview. Um, and now our state is going to include a third, another object. And I'm going to call it like the leg we're on. And so we're going to start on leg zero. Leg one will be when we walk back from the end to the start. And leg two will be walking from the start back to the end. And that's really all we need to keep. Um, so we're adding that here. Um, and then the, the only tricky part here is we say, um, you know, we're this, this ending state is a little bit more complicated. So we're going to say if we can reach the end and it's leg one or two, 
we're going to do it. Um, because if we're in layer one or two, we want to do that. So we'll say if dr r plus dr c plus dc equals end, and we're in layer one or two, uh, if leg is zero, we're going to set part one equal to a thing. We're going to print the result here. Um, so we probably don't need to set it here anymore. We could just uh, do we care about what part one is anywhere? I'll leave this for now, but I don't think we need it. Um, and then we're going to continue on, appending that option to the queue. Um, if, we, if we're in part two, we're going to break because we've, we've, we've solved the problem. We've got back. Oh, sorry. Else, if, leg, leg is, if we're in leg two, we've reached the end for the second time. Um, and you'll note, we will note here, when we pass this to the queue, we've now set the leg equal to one. So we were, we were in leg zero, but now we're in leg one. We also will check if we can reach the start and it's like one. So if the RDR C plus DC equals start and it's like one, well then we're going to add a queue here where we move to that spot to start and we now set it to leg two. And we're actually going to break because we aren't going to want to go any other direction. Like we can, if we needed to wait longer, we can always wait at start. So um, then otherwise we'll check here for, you know, same as before. We'll just check and we'll stay in the same leg. Leg doesn't change and we'll continue. And um, this runs pretty fast as well. It, it, it takes a second. There's a, there's a good amount of work here, but uh, I guess we'll do the example first um, very quickly. And uh, the this and this will take a few seconds, but it's not um, not insurmountable. You know, so there's part one we found, and we're now we're just going to do it um, two more times. So it's going to increase the space a little bit, but not too bad. And there's 713 our answer, and there's 713 our answer. So. Uh, I thought this was a neat problem. Um, I got stuck longer than I'm proud to admit on a couple of things where I just made some really dumb typos and I had to do some debugging and stuff. Um, I don't know if that would have been an interesting video or not, but it just, I wasn't, I, you know, on the road was not a place to ever record a video continuously. So uh, you're going to have to get what you get here. Um, thanks for hanging out with me today. And uh, I guess I'll be back for the last one. Hopefully, I don't know if I'll actually get a video out on Christmas Day, but uh, I'll get one of the, I'll get the day 25 video and I still owe the day 22 video as well. So. Uh, they are coming in. Uh, thanks for sticking up the end, and I will talk to you next time.